what we talked about, the self-awareness, mm -hmm. emotional maturation, um, personal power and purpose, all of that adds up. We talked a whole lot about self-awareness. The first thing I had you do, Here. the first thing that I had you do was take inventory of yourself. First of all, we got to back up, okay? Because this, when you start becoming more self-aware, the, the victimness of everything goes out of the window. When you become more self-aware, you start to identify the source of things. When you start to identify the source of things, you don't take things personally. I'll give you an example, talking about your mom and, and that dynamic and that energy. Same thing with me, I can relate to it. What I had to understand, what helped me is understanding the source of the behavior of why my mom is the way she is, why she treats me the way she does, why we have that kind of dynamic. Once you understand the source, you understand that what she went through, that, that was some bull crap. So how does she doesn't have the capacity to give you what you need? She doesn't have the capacity to, ex she, 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 doesn't, she can't expect certain things from you either because she didn't nurture that in you. You know what I mean? So when we identify the source, we, we, take, we take our egos out of it. We don't take it personal. And, this, and, and the only way to do that is to become self-aware of what is going on inside of you. Okay, what is happening here? Otherwise, you just suppress it, suppress it, go drinking, go shopping, doing whatever it is you want to do not to feel shit. That's what happens. But when we start becoming self, when we, when we are responsible enough to go within, beautiful things, magic happens, magic. And, and when we start to go in, when we become self-aware, guess what? We stop taking things personally. And you know what happens when you stop taking things personally? you become emotionally mature. And all of this, the, the self-awareness, the emotional maturation, that comes from meditation and mindfulness. That's why we talked a lot about, that's why I really, really, really encouraged you to meditate. Get quiet, get still, sit with what you're feeling. Because what you realize is, number one, you're not gonna die. You're not going to die if you sit and feel, <laughs> sit with the shit you feel. Feel it, let it get through your body. Because the only way you're going to get past it, get over it, is to let it, allow it to go through you. Go through you and out you. That is emotional maturation. That is what meditation trains your mind to do, trains your body to do. I'll give you an example. When you're sitting and you're meditating and you feel an itch, over time, you'll ignore that itch. It'll come, but it'll pass. You'll feel it and it's like, you, but it will eventually pass. Same thing that translate that carries over into your everyday life. Except it's not, it's, except it's not a little a itch on your face. It's a, it's a crisis. It's, you know, oh, I can't, I can't pay my rent. You'll feel that. You'll feel what it feels like in your body, but you'll sit through it. You'll know that, okay, this is happening. This is how it's making me feel. I can't pay my damn rent. Fuck. Okay. Sh damn. But then you're going to, but then you, you're not reactive. You have a certain, a sense of stillness and peace so you can figure out what your next move needs to be. And typically, that next move is going to come to you. It's going to show up in front of you. You don't even have to go looking for it. You're just going to tell the universe, you know what? God, universe, this rent got to be paid. Now, I don't, you know, what, what you need me to do? What's my next step? You'll be out talking to people, you know, my rent. Whatever, however it happens. Somebody, somebody might write, offer to write you a check. I've seen stuff like that happen. You just never know 
what the universe will bring you. But one thing is for certain, the universe will always have your back. We are not here to be abandoned. The, the universe, God, does not abandon us, period. It hasn't for billions and billions of years. People who are abandoned, are that's their choice. I mean, that, that let me make sure I'm, I'm, I'm saying this with, with compassion and empathy. I honestly feel like when people get to the point where they, you know, are in situations where they actually feel abandoned, I feel like that is a result of a series of choices. I truthfully and honestly feel like if we are trusting the universe, we are trusting God, we are doing the internal work, we will never go without. We will never be in lack. The universe will always provide. Now, are all of us here to be rich and have millions of dollars? No. No. But we will be taken care of. Our needs will be met if we are trusting the universe and if we are doing the internal work. Internal work results in you discovering more about who you are. So that's why we talk a lot about, you know, sitting with yourself. This allows you to ask yourself questions. It, re it allows you to reflect. For you to say, okay, let me see, how am I feeling? Hmm. All right, how is this making me feel? How is this food, what I ate earlier, making me feel? How is this relationship that I'm in making me feel? How is living with this person making me feel? Excuse me, how is this job that I'm at making me feel? All of those questions and thoughts that go through your mind, those help you become more aware of who you are. When you know who you are, you, it's easier to find out what your purpose is. And when you ask the universe to reveal to you your purpose, it will. I went through that same process. For years and years, I'm like, I don't know what the hell I want to do. And I, and I didn't. And I went to grad school as an occupational therapist, and it's great, it's a great field to be in. Um, if, if I had have known what I know now, would I have made a different choice? Probably, but I definitely don't have any regrets, but I probably would have made a different choice. But I don't know what I, I didn't know what I know now about myself. But when I did go on this journey of self-discovery and trying to figure out who I am, and I, I specifically asked the universe, what am I here for? What, the, what is my purpose? Why am I here? It revealed it to me time and time and time again. It's just a matter of paying attention. And again, going back to the meditation and the mindfulness, why it's so important. And it's not just, um, no, there's a thousand ways to meditate. Just be training your mind to sit still and not think about anything is meditation. Because in those little windows, you get information. There are downloads happening from the universe. You're getting messages. You're getting answers. So when you train your brain, when you train your mind to just be still in chaotic situations, because life is chaotic. Life can be chaotic. Life can be very stressful. When you train your mind not to be, not to be chaotic, also go along with that chaotic mess. When you train your mind to be grounded, okay, I see what's happening around me. It's almost like you, you're able to take yourself out of the movie and you see yourself, you see the movie playing in front of you. You're able to step back and see things for what they are and you're able to think clearly. You have moments of clarity. 
But if you don't train your mind to do that, you're constantly like a little tumbleweed just blowing in the wind all the time along with the chaos. You're just riding the wave, riding the wave of the chaos. So that is why meditation and mindfulness is so important. It's, it's bigger than just, you know, just sitting every day. It, 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 if you do it consistently and you make it a part of your practice, your everyday, you will see the effects translate into your life. And, and my, my other thing, personal power. You know, I used to tell you, you are so powerful all the time. You are powerful, you are powerful, you are powerful. When we realize how powerful we are, it's a different kind of world. You are bold. You are confident. You take risk, calculated risk. You live. You don't just exist or survive. You live. You exercise your power. You know that expression, exercising your power? You actually, and when you know that you are powerful, you, you begin to exercise your power. And when you exercise your power, you manifest. You get what you want. When you exercise your power, you're able to operate in your purpose. You're able to put things in place that allow you to operate in your purpose when you know your personal power. So I strongly and highly encourage you to reach out to me if you want, if, if, you, if you, you know, if you want to see your life changed, if you want to have a different kind of life in the future, six months from now, a year from now, I highly encourage you to reach out to me and I will help you. We can do this. We will do this together. We will get to feeling better. We will get to manifesting. We will get to operating in all of your purpose and all of your gifts because one thing I know for certain is that when you operate in your gifts, your gifts will take care of you every single time. Thank you guys and until next time, blessings.